Welcome to Wrap It Up with Radio Raheem. I'm your host, Jamal Radio Raheem. Now, for those who are new to this, Wrap It Up is a show where I talk about music topic, from top 10 list to album reviews, just, just random music topics. Now, on this episode, I had a conversation with Kevin. Kevin is somebody that I, well, I haven't met him, but I listened to his playlist on SoundCloud, and I reached out to him because I wanted to have him on, on the record. But the conversation was... I didn't want to use it for on the record because the conversation was just too good. And we went and talked about other stuff other than like him showing his collection and everything. So I'm going to split it into two parts, but this is my conversation that I have with Kevin. He goes by vibes only or bars only on SoundCloud. I'm going to put all his information in the description. So enjoy the conversation until next time. Peace. Like, um, it had like two or three different names before. So like you were saying, how did I come up with the name at first? It was like night shift, and then it transitioned to like Friday vibe day because I wanted to drop the things on Friday. But then after that, I was like, you know what? I don't want to have a specific day to drop. I just want to drop it whenever I want to. If I want to do it on Saturday or Tuesday, I want to do that. So the Friday thing kind of went out the, out the window. And then it was just like, all right. It, it was more of like an R&B soul feel. Uh, so I went with like vibes on it. Still wanted to stick with like a vibe because that's kind of the, the gist you get from the play that you can just throw it on and kind of set a vibe around the house or when you're driving or wherever you're at. Really. So like, do you do you only drop it on um SoundCloud? Because like that's how I found it. Because I was I scroll on SoundCloud like I'm trying to find new music all the time. Like, so do you only drop it on SoundCloud like the mix or do you put it on Spotify? SoundCloud and then like. Uh, randomly, some I found out about doing playlists on like Spotify and stuff. So I want to, I'm, I'm starting to load them on um, Spotify, but um, I'm like, I'm kind of deep into it. So I'm like 20, 30 playlists in. So it's just hard to go back and like, yeah. like number one and put them all on there. So, I, so I'm transitioning to, I do want to get it on other platforms like Spotify or, um, like YouTube or things like that, but mainly it, it sounds like that's like the, the main spot to get it from. So like, um, how do you, I'm not even going, I can go off it. How do you come up with the songs that you put on the playlist? Cause like, um, the vibe kind of, the vibe playlist you have in the bars are completely different. So how do you come up with like, all right, this song for this week, this song for next week and which songs is going which? All right, right. So that's what um, I had. That's why I had to make bars only because they were they were starting to become so different. So I would have at first all that was together. It would be like the vibes only and bars only together. <clears throat> but then I started having like trap songs I wanted to play. I'm like, I don't really fit yeah. R and B song or whatever. So I'm like, I gotta do something different. So that's why I started making the bars only for more like trap trap music or like just straight rap like bars and people who just want to you gotta kind of dive into it to digest their bars and stuff and you may still have random like you know two chains joints on there or whatever yeah. but that's that's more like the rapping side so the vibes only i had to kind of like pull away pull some of those rapping songs out of the vibes only and make bars on it mm. uh, vibes only is more like r&b soul and you might you might catch some rappers on there like you might catch something with like a wale feature or a wale song but it's it's it depends on the vibe of the song. It's not gonna be where like Wale is just spitting bars all the way through. It's gonna be more of his like you know you know how he has those R and B type joints. Yeah, Wale well, got a whole bunch of them. So it's stuff it's stuff like that. If you catch a rapper on there, it's gonna be songs like that where they got an R and B feel to it, or it's like a, a vibe to it. It's not just straight a hard beat and straight rapping over it. So when like so when you do them, do you make it like in a way that like when you say bars only, do you go off of like, are they like just bar songs that are just strictly bars, like lyrical songs, or do you go with songs that are just rap? It's both. At first, I wanted to do just straight lyrical, lyrical, but then I had other songs that I'm like jamming to where it's like trap music, so it may not be super lyrical, but it's it's a dope rap song. And, they, and even, even trap songs, they have catchy lines and catchy, you know, things yeah. like that. So it's more like, rap more like a rap genre so you may have like the super lyrical stuff but then you're gonna have you know you probably have some turn up stuff some trap stuff and sometimes too i try to make it to where 
even some of the songs they fit together. So if it's maybe seven, eight songs on the playlist, maybe the first four or five are like bar, like straight lyrical stuff. But then as you get to the other ones, it may be more trap, turn up, whatever. So they still kind of fit together in in the playlist, you know? Yeah. So, because I'm someone like I do playlists all the time. And, like, how you do it is how I really wanted to do it. Like, I don't want to, like, have a set day on how I released it. I do it every Saturday, but that is, like, draining to, like, figure out what song to put on every week. Like, I'm about to, like, after <laughs> after this week, I'm not doing it every Saturday. I'm about to do it whenever I feel like it. Put a, a, like a certain limit on me. So, it's because at first when I started doing the Friday vibe day thing, it was like every Friday or I would have to drop it on a Friday. But then sometimes it's like, all right, I have these songs ready to go. So maybe I just want to drop it right now. I want to drop it on Tuesday or Wednesday. I just want to be able to do it whenever. And I don't want to be limited to where people are like, well, you said you're going to do it on Friday. Like, where's where's the playlist? You know, so yeah. I feel like every two or three weeks or may, it might be once a month, you know, I drop, drop a playlist. It's not, it's not any specific things on it because that's how I was, I was feeling like you at first like man it's, it gets draining to be like I gotta get all these songs ready it's the night before I'm trying to you know get everything together so I just made it to where I, I, I can do it whenever I want to okay so since you told me in our conversation before I started recording that you are an artist so yeah. um, what type of music do you make um, how would you describe your sound? So I'm to, going to like hip hop, like the hip hop, um, hip hop, R and B ish kind of style. Um, but I, I like I'm, I'm very versatile. I can do songwriting as well. So I have, and I, like you see, I do vibes only. So I have an R and B like soul in me. So I have I have those things with melody and stuff in my music. But it's more like a hip hop, hip hop, um, hip hop range. Okay, so. These are questions. You know, the questions changed since you told me that. That's, That's why I'm like, I'm not going off of it. So, um, what artists like would you want to collab? Well, give me like three different artists who you would collab with and why you would want to collab with them. As far as like um, making music with them, like, that's all yeah. Music. So it could be like a producer. It can be whatever. Like, yeah. um, well, one of my favorites is Kendrick. So can for sure, I definitely want to just be in the session just to pick his brain and work with him for sure. Um, let's see, who else, who else? One of my, uh, like a producer, well, he's an artist too, is Ryan Leslie. Ryan Leslie, no. He don't get his credit. He does not get his credit. And I've always, one of my big things about him is I always watch his videos that he puts up. He hasn't done them too, too, too um, often, I mean, lately. But he used to always put up like these in the studio videos where he's making beats and he makes a song and everything. So that's what always got me hooked on him. So um, Kendrick, maybe Ryan Leslie, who else? Um, I'm a Kanye fan, so I'm gonna go with Kanye because you get the artist and producer. Some of the latest music, I I, <laughs> I, I get it, but um. If, if it was like old Kanye or like where he's he's in that zone, especially production wise, the samples and all that stuff, like that would that'd be I'm sure I'm sure some of those sessions are it would be crazy. Yeah, Kanye's uh he's one of those artists that like I'd be like, man, cause I got like all his albums except the recent one. So yeah, he's yeah. like a hard one to like cause growing up too, like Kanye's really Kanye, I would say tribe and Kanye West, but mainly Kanye, his first two or three albums, I would say the first three, yeah. like the production, like I got into like, where's that sample from? Like, yeah. I got into all of that because of Kanye, like late registration, really, like yeah. played that. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> My favorite one is that one with Brandy. Really? To let you down or whatever. I'm actually, that's, yeah, that's surprising. Before that, the, um, Ah, look, I forgot the name of it, but the one with Brandy is one of my joints, and then the Roses, Roses is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, those those first two three albums that's, that that locked you in to him for sure. Yeah, he's like a he's like an artist. I'm like, man, just don't talk. <laughs> just like put the, just don't talk. You make it hard for me to be like justifying listening to him. Like certain artists, it's like they say something dumb. I'm like, oh, I'm done. But Kanye, I was like, I can't. You know. You're already connected. You like, man, just shut up and go make. There's it. memories attached to it. So, yeah. um, what I guess what inspires you to keep creating? Because I'm gonna give an example for me with everything that's going on. Um, COVID actually inspired me, which is a fucked up thing to say. But like, I worked so much like in education. So I worked six days a week. I worked Monday through Saturday. So um, I have really no free time. So COVID gave me time to be like, all right, you have no excuse. But so what inspires you to like, one, put the playlist together and one to like do stuff as an artist yourself? I think it's just, I'm like, more of like a, a people person just like helping out and um, I always want to put people on and show people new stuff like even if it's like even outside of music with wine or alcohol or drinks or something I'm like oh this is try this drink right here trying to put somebody on to something so with the music it was always just one of those things where I, I was not, not to say ahead of the game but I was just on people while they were coming up I used to always you know I've seen Big Sean and Cole whenever they were you know, nobodies, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, just to like see these people and put your friends on it, like, oh, who's that? Like, who's that person whenever you're playing stuff? That was, that's what got me into into um making the playlist and being like, all right, people are going to listen to this because you see how many, because I know a lot of people are just tuned into the radio. Most people, they don't go searching for music and like like yourself, you're, you're an educator, so you, you don't have time to go and listen to every album that drops and so and so who puts this out so you can just go through a quick playlist and be like oh these are some of the new people who are putting stuff out i don't know this one i know i know division oh okay they got a new song a new album okay boom let me go check that out so it's just that was the kind of inspiration behind it just me putting people on and and sharing sharing things that people couldn't get to on their own at times so if you're um talking to like somebody who's never like they never met you or anything like that what what playlist of yours would you recommend to them so i guess i'm asking you what's your favorite playlist the one that you do yeah. and my favorite it's hard to pick a favorite but i like to go with some of like the more popular ones um so they're they're by number so it's been so i'm on i'm on survive zone on number 29 right now but um whenever i first started number four and number seven those were the two that really like took off and, and, and showed me like, okay, people really, they're really looking for it, looking for like new music and trying to figure out where I can, uh, a certain spot to go to where I can hear new music every month and find new artists. So I would say number four, number, um, number seven, 15, those are some of the main ones that, that really like hook people in. So I, I like those. Yeah, Cause I don't even know which one it was that I I was listening to. Who was I listening to? Who was I listening to? I think I was. It might have been Two Chains actually. And then like your playlist came up, and I was like, and I put it on, and I was cleaning. I was like, oh, this kind of go. <laughs> and then that's how I found out. So. And that's why I love it because you can just throw them on anytime, and it's. That's my main thing. You don't have to like sit down and just listen to it. You can throw it on around the house, start cleaning. And then with my thing too, like you can just go playlist to playlist to playlist. And it's just, you don't hear straight vibes the whole time. Maybe an hour or two later, you and you in the uh, bathroom cleaning and dancing. You're like, man, what is like, what is this going on here? You know? All right, let's see. I'm trying to like, because I spent time writing these questions. I'm like, I don't even want to go off of them. But um, so if you had like three albums, you would say, I'm going to say three albums that made an impact on you in your life at yeah. certain points when you were a child, um, your teenage years and, and now. What three albums would that be? Uh, so I was thinking about this too whenever, whenever I was looking at them. Um, so since we were talking about Kanye, one of, one of them is um, uh, College Dropout. 
for sure. College dropout, that's just a memorable one that I can always think about being at school or listening to it, going here and there. Um, <clears throat> another one is Kendrick's uh, Good Kid, Mad City. Uh, um, that's that's one of my one of my joints. I remember just just at the time uh, it was important because a lot of albums they've gone away from being albums. You know, being able to listen from top to bottom. So a lot yeah. of albums are kind of playlists now. It's just a bunch of they either record forty songs and pick the best ten and put them on an album. So Good Kid, Mad City. That was one of those ones where it's like, oh, okay, you went back to making an album where. It, I got to listen from top to bottom to understand what's going on. And, and when you get to the end, you're like, damn, let me, let me play this back. Let me, let me run it back again because yeah. it's a story. <clears throat> so that's, that's one. And what was another one I was thinking? Um, an older one, probably not too old, but um, a little before those would be uh, Jay's Black Album. Mm. Uh, that one. And, and also, too, the reason I say these are because I, I remember those times. So the main thing with Black Albums, I remember, I remember he had that, that DVD with it, where he showed, like, the behind the scenes and everything. So that's what really drew me in to, to that album. So I'm a big behind the scenes guy. So I love seeing, like, people in the studio and when they're working and stuff. So I think uh, Black Album having that DVD it really drew me into, like, Jay-Z more. It made me do, like, my studies on it a little, little bit more, you know? Yeah, that that album, I remember exactly where I was and like, because my dad picked us up from school and I was like, oh, what's this? You know, <laughs> you know, this is CDs. You have to buy CDs. My dad used to buy all the CDs and we sitting in the car and then because I heard like the singles from the album, like I'm a Jay-Z fan. So we heard the singles, but we didn't hear the album. And he put that on. I was like, oh, when PSA came on. I was like, "Oh, this is yeah. this is it." <laughs> like, I thought he was retiring, so I was like, "This is the last album. It's a good album to go out on." <laughs> that was a it. solid album to go it's out on. One, I was like, "Damn, this!" I can. You really felt like he was about to get out of there. Like, oh, he, he closed it up right here. Yeah, he was. He was in his bag on that one. Definitely. So. I mean, I'm supposed to be asking you to show me your collection, but I honestly don't really care about that collection. Um, but show me what you got and the first thing you got and the importance of it. Let's see. So like I was saying earlier, um, I got these from like my parents. So these are some old school joints. Let me see what we got here. Hold on, I'm sorry. Oh, you got the Isley Brothers. Oh, you got some old, old ones. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't have like the new, the new, new joints, but I got the old school from Isley Brothers. Um, yeah. so, I mean, and then I guess this also kind of shows where the um, R and B and the stuff from Bob mm -hmm. Zone kind of come from. Um, you know, just having having old school stuff like this around the house. Oh, okay. Cool stuff, yeah. And see, like I said, I just got a um, record player too, so I haven't even been able to listen to all these. Oh, this is this is a good one too. Um, Red Fox. Oh, the comedy album. Comedy, yeah. So that's that's the thing I I, I really like too. And um, on vibes only, I know you were talking about uh how kind of COVID inspired things for you. Mm -hmm. That kind of inspired some of the playlists for Vibes Only. So what I did now with Vibes Only, I'm starting to make um, different sections like, or different um, segments. So what I did is a Vibes Only Black. So oh yeah, kind of, I heard that one. And, uh, during the whole COVID stuff and like the, the protests and the George Floyd stuff, that kind of sparked a lot of, you know, new songs to come out about the protests and about you know, just black equality. So that um, kind of sparked those playlists. But um, to circle back, what I was talking about with the comedy, um, I'm a big comedy guy too. So I like, you know, some of the old comedians, Red Fox, Richard Pryor, Bernie Mac, all those dudes. So on, on the Vibes Only Black, I use um, some of Richard Pryor's comedy to kind of um, start off the playlist. But that's why I was tying that back in with some of these um, comedy records. 
And I was I was surprised too because when I was whenever um I got some of these vinyls, I didn't know they had comedy like that. I didn't Yeah. You know, yeah, they made comedy albums too, but as you as you think about it, you know, Chris Rock had his comedy albums and everybody think and it's like it's just another genre kind of like music, you know? Yeah, I usually so uh, when I go to Christ before this damn pandemic, I would go to the record store when I have free time. And they have like whole sections at this one record store that I go to. They have like a whole section of just comedy albums on vinyl. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I didn't realize either until I started really going because I moved to the Bay Area. Um, I'm from Southern California, but I didn't have any of my like my vinyl records or my CDs or movies any of that when i moved here so like i kind of had to restart and then i went back home like for our holidays or whatever and grabbed all my stuff so but i didn't know anything about comedy albums or anything they got like they even have them on cds and i was like oh that's because i just bought i just bought who was i just bought uh chris rocks i think it's never scared i think i just got that one on cd and I didn't know that they had stuff like yeah, that. they would drop them like albums. They'd do their comedy special and then drop it like it's an album and go buy the CD or the tape or whatever now, you know? So how would you, um, I mean, you kind of already did, but how would you describe your music taste? Um, so it's, it's a variety of things, but lately, I guess, because I've been doing the vibes on the playlist, I've gotten more into like a R and B soul um, soul type of vibe. Um, I don't, I know the word vibe can be a little cliche at times. Yeah, I think people who use it, they kind of understand what that means. You know, you understand what what setting the vibe is, or like having a, a vibe or a song with a vibe. You know, you know. Yeah. It's just, Thing like a turn up song or a trap song or a, a pop song and things like that. Like, oh, this is this is a vibe. Okay, like I'm, I'm rocking with this, you know. So <clears throat> it may sound a little cliche, but I think that would be a good word to categorize, like the, the feel or the tone of the music. All right, I got like a couple more questions, but one question because I found a couple artists off of your playlist. Um, what would you say? Who are some artists like you are listening to who don't get the shine? Like we already know about the Kendricks and the Coles and all of them. Like who are some artists that you listen to who you think don't get shine? Uh, all right, um, I, I, they're kind of big, but I would say they they still slept on division. Mm. Um, they like the. Uh, it's because they signed a Drake. That's why they they're not as big because Drake. Yeah, they're like they're signed to OVO, so they have like a large platform. But I think they still get overlooked in the R and B category, you know. So I think them, uh, some other people. Uh, let's see, um, J- Javon. I think that's how you say his name. Give me on. Give oh, give me on. Yeah. Give on, yeah. And he's he, he's uh, one of the newer guys coming up, starting to make some noise. Um, Smino, Smino's one of my dudes. You know. He's very very underrated, and he's he's cold as hell. Smino cold as hell. Um, who else? Black. He's he's getting his notice more, but um, I just feel like every time Black does something, he he never he he never fails. He comes through. He don't through. miss. He does he not miss. miss. Like his albums or his features, he still like comes through and makes the song better or does whatever he needs to. Uh, who else? Who else? Man. Let me think of one. Um, Cash Page, she's from Dallas. She's starting to get a little more notoriety. Yeah, she's kind of um, she's about to be huge. I think next year yeah, she's gonna be huge. And it's and it's dope too seeing it from Texas. So I wasn't on her too early. But then once she, once I started seeing her do some things, and then people saying, "Oh, she's from Dallas," it's like, "Okay, she from the from the same state." So it's good to watch, you know, people from from Texas kind of do their thing. Um, and there's there's a there's a, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot though. Uh, some of the newer cats. All right, I'm gonna end the episode right here at this point. I have to figure out a good point to end it. 
but I'm gonna split it into two episodes. But so next week, the second part of this episode will come out. We talked about like concerts and all type of stuff. But this has been another episode of Wrap It Up with Radio Raheem. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Um, if you're on Instagram, you could share it, you could like it, you can still do all that stuff. It's free, you know. Support black creators out here, support creators in general out here. But every Saturday as well, we have the Radio Raheem tape. Don't forget to listen to that. Listen to Kevin's tape, listen to the vibes only, listen to bars only on SoundCloud. I'm gonna put it again all in the description. And until next time, peace.